Okay, so I got to tell you guys, this is my first time being like a guest on my Facebook Live. <laughs> Ellen's going to be running this show, but I wanted to hop on and say hi um, and just welcome you all here. So I'm Beth Ann from Brilliant Business Moms, and this is Ellen, Ellen Russell. She is my secret weapon when it comes to everything like beautiful for for brilliant business moms, like all of our graphics, um, so much. There's so much that Ellen does. Um, and so Ellen is going to teach all of us tonight how to create a template for our businesses using Photoshop. And I'm going to be learning right along with you guys, too. So, uh, yeah, so take it away, Ellen. We are so excited to learn from you. All right. Awesome. I'm really excited to do this. Okay, I just want to let you know, I love using templates in Photoshop. It is such a great way to be able to quickly um, make graphics for your business. And I love that I can use them over and over again. It's just such a shortcut. So tonight I'm going to show you how to create a really cool template for Instagram. And this again is one that you can add your own branding into. You'll be able to kind of follow these steps and create your own. And uh, Photoshop can be a little confusing. If you haven't been in it before, there are lots and lots of tools. So I'm just gonna kind of go along and show you how to do this. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new document. I'm just gonna hit this nice create new button. And for an Instagram photo, usually we go with a 1080 by 1080 pixels. That's kind of the ideal size. I usually keep a pretty high resolution just to make sure things are looking good. So once I've put in 1080 by 1080, I'm going to go ahead and hit create. And now we can start creating our template. Now, again, I know when you first get into Photoshop, it is crazy overwhelming. There's so much stuff going on, lots of tools, but I'm just going to kind of walk you through step by step. So the first thing that we're going to do is we want to kind of have some background images, especially for Instagram. It's very visually orientated, right? So we want to have a lot of photos. And so we are going to go over here. This is an important section of Photoshop. It's one that you're probably going to use the most. And this is your layers. You can kind of think of it like your desk. You know, you have stacks of papers on it. And so the order of these layers really matters. And I'll kind of show you why in a minute. So what I'm going to do first is we're going to go down here and there's this little one that looks like a folder and it's called a group and we can create a new group. And we're going to go ahead and something important to do as you're working with a Photoshop file is making sure that you label as you go. Otherwise, you can get really lost and confused, especially when you start working with files with lots of pieces. It's really easy to lose stuff. So. You want to try to label as much as you can just because that's going to help you in the future and especially with a file like this that you're going to use for a template. So this layer right here, I'm just going to double click right where the, it says group one and we're going to call this our background layer. I'm going to set up all my folders first and then we'll start bringing in our photos and all that kind of cool stuff. I'm going to create a couple more groups just by clicking the new group icon. We're gonna have some overlays here. And I'll explain a little bit more what these different things mean in a little bit. And then we'll have some text on top. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna bring in is some backgrounds. It's super easy to bring in photos to Photoshop. You can just go file open and open them up on your computer. You can also, especially if you're on your Mac, you can use your finder and you can just drag them down to your Photoshop icon and it'll open them up for you. So I have a couple really pretty stock photos picked out and I'm going to hold down my shift key so I can select all three at once and I'm just gonna hit open. All right, now that I have these open, we need to get them into our template over here. Now when you're working in Photoshop, you have these little arrows and these will show you all of the different photos or documents that you have open. So this is kind of how you can move between them pretty quickly. So this first one is our untitled document, which I'm actually going to go ahead and save right now. Just to make sure I give it a name. And we're going to call this our Instagram template. 
I'm saving it as a Photoshop file. That way it saves all the layers and I can keep working with them. And it's important to save your work a lot as you go. If your computer crashes for some reason, often Photoshop will have a file saved from that. But um, it's always best to really save as you go. All right, now we're ready to bring in our photos. So there's two ways you can do this. My favorite way is once I've opened up a photo is I just, you can click anywhere on it and you're gonna click and hold down and you can literally just drag it right into the file that you wanna put it in, just like that. And once I know that I've dragged one in, I'm just gonna go ahead and close it out using this X. Another thing you can do is if you have a file open, you can also just right click here on this layer and we can duplicate it and we can duplicate it right into our template. So just two different ways to do really the same thing and it's kind of whatever makes it easier for you. So I'm gonna move this last one in. And right now, of course, these are really big because our file's not that big and these are some pretty big stock photos. So I'll talk about resizing in just a minute. But I wanna make sure when I bring in all my photos that I put them all in the right place. So right now, all three of these stock photos I want to have in my background folder. And I am gonna go ahead and zoom out. You can use your scroll wheel on your mouse or there's a zoom key down here. I zoom out a little bit. And you'll see that when you have one of these layers selected, you'll see the little nodes and that's showing you the edges of the photo. What you wanna do when you're resizing something in Photoshop is you wanna hold down the shift key, that way it keeps us right proportions for the photo. If you don't hit the shift key, what can actually happen, you see here, is I can actually squash my photo, which isn't good. We want it to keep the right proportions so it looks right. So I'm gonna hold down shift, and I'm just gonna start resizing and moving this around a little. And I'm just gonna center this kind of over my dock right here. Now this one's pretty easy, this is a square photo. And Photoshop has some little handy guidelines. You can see when if I click and hold down and drag around, you can see that these little purple lines show up and that's Photoshop letting me know when something's aligned. So in this case, I want it aligned vertically and horizontally. Once I'm pretty happy with that, I'm gonna go ahead and give this layer a name. Since this has a clipboard, I'm just gonna call it clipboard. Again, it's just kind of good to label as you go. That way, once you start getting lots of layers here, you'll be able to know at a glance what's what. Now that I'm happy with this layer, I'm gonna click the little eyeball and that's gonna turn it off for me. And I'm gonna kind of zoom back out and do same thing with this next layer. I'm gonna resize it. Now this one you can see is rectangular shaped. So I'm not gonna be able to resize it down to a square, but we're gonna just kind of fit it in and move it around until it looks good. Again, make sure you hold down shift when you're resizing. It's a really important step. And for this photo, I think what I want is I actually want all of this cool, gorgeous stuff on this desktop on the bottom. So you'll notice when I have when I'm doing all this resizing, if I put my mouse over here next to the corners, I get these kind of funny little arrows. And this is gonna let me actually rotate my photo. Um, I usually hold down shift because it kind of snaps it. You can see it snaps in little angles and then I can make sure it's straight. Just move it around until things look good. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. I know a lot of the photo is off, but this leaves some space for some text if I want to add some later. This one, I'm just gonna call Blue Desk. Okay, and then let's go down to our last layer that we've brought in here. And I'm just gonna drag it around and resize. And the great thing with this template, or any template that you really you make in Photoshop is you can bring in lots and lots of layers. So I have some of these templates like that I use for Brilliant Business Moms where I might have 30 different backgrounds in here, but that means I can just turn these on and off and I can make a lot of images really quickly with what I do.
Okay, so now we kind of have our backgrounds in, which is great. And now we're gonna move on to our overlays because we're getting this all set up basically where you'll be able to use something like this to be able to create kind of whatever image you need for Instagram. So sometimes on Instagram, you might simply just have an image like this. You might just use the background section and save it like this, but other times you might want a quote on it or something like that. So one great way is if we have a gorgeous background is we might wanna put an overlay over this. So I'm gonna to go to my overlays. And then in Photoshop, there's something cool called objects, which is this little menu, this little button down here. Uh, we're gonna pick our rectangle tool. And I'm gonna make sure, I'm gonna do this one white for now. Got our rectangle tool selected. And I'm just gonna click and start dragging. I'm gonna click, hold down and start dragging. And the important thing is, especially for a photo like this, where I know this is gonna be a perfect square, I'm gonna hold down the shift key. And again, that just kind of constrains it so I know the proportions are right. And then once I'm kind of happy with the size, I'm gonna go ahead and let go. And you can see here that Photoshop has given me this nice little white square. And if ever any menus pop up that you kind of get in your way, you can just click, there's little arrows all over the place. You can kind of click to hide them. So again, I'm gonna hold down on this and I'm gonna drag it around and those little purple guidelines are gonna pop up again to help me out. Now, this is looking pretty good so far, right? But I really want to see the beautiful desktop behind this. So what you can do is I wanna make sure I have my nice rectangular overlay selected. Oh yeah, we're gonna give it a name real quick. We're just gonna call this square sheer white. And then what I can do over in this layers tab is I can change the opacity of a layer. So in this case, I'm gonna bump it down. Let's see, I'll probably go down to 90. If I'm gonna be putting text on top of something that kind of has a busy background behind it, I don't really generally go much lower than 85%. Otherwise it starts getting a little too hard to read the text. And usually I stick around 90, but you can kind of play with it depending on the photo that you have. So I know it might be a little hard to see on your screen, but you're, you should be able to see just a little bit of the desktop showing through here. And again, this looks pretty good, but we really want this overlay to kind of pop off the background a little bit. So we're gonna give it just a simple little drop shadow. I'm gonna go up to this layers up in my top menu. And then we're going to go down to layer style. And there's a whole lot of options here, but the one that I usually use the most is this one right here, which is drop shadow. Depending on the size of your screen, you kind of have to finagle things a little bit in order to see the drop shadow that's going on. And I know this might be a little hard to see. I, I know sometimes Facebook Live videos can be a little grainy, but you might be able to see down here, there's just the slightest drop shadow that started. So this is our drop shadow window. There's a couple things here. First is the angle, and this really just adjusts the angle of whatever shadow that you're putting down. The one thing I would say is if you have a particular way you like your shadows, especially for like an overlay like this, you kind of want to stay consistent with your photos. So usually I'm, I usually have my shadow pointing this way for overlays. That way the shadow is kind of on this bottom corner here. You can adjust the color of your shadow. I usually leave it somewhere in the grays, but sometimes you might want some color, especially depending on your brand colors. You might wanna kinda of color your shadows a little bit just to kinda of make things interesting. So I'm happy with this gray. I also usually have the opacity turned down pretty far because you can see if I go up too high, this starts looking really dark and it just kinda of looks a little unnatural. So I usually keep mine down pretty low, like below 30%. But again, it's really up to you and how your brand is. And then really part of what I do is I kind of just play with this distance spread in size until I'm happy with how it looks. So 5510 is kind of one I use a lot, especially for BBM branding. And once I'm happy with how that looks, I'm just gonna hit okay. 
So now we have this awesome little overlay that's just right on top of our background image. And one of the cool things about this is because I have this overlay in this separate folder here, this overlays folder, what I can actually do is, you know, I have this background on right now, but I can actually swap this out. I can turn that off and I can use the same overlay on any of these backgrounds that I put in. So again, for you, you might have a lot of, you know, photos, either stock photos you've got or all sorts of things like that, that you can just pop into here and just turn these on and off and be able to use a lot of images really quickly. Okay, and then next, of course, we wanna put our text on top. So I'm gonna go up to our text layer and oh yeah, one of the cool things about Photoshop is um, the, with the layers, you can actually have subgroups. So I'm gonna go back to my little group button and I'm gonna create two of these. And then I am gonna hold down shift so I can select both of these groups right here, group one and group two. And then I'm gonna click and drag and just bring that into my text group right here. So you see, as soon as I do that, it kind of puts it as a subgroup underneath it. So for this, usually what I do is I have two different fonts and, you know, for your brand, you might have your two different fonts or maybe it's three. So for Brilliant Business Moms, of course, we have our two fonts here. So I just kind of give them a short name label just so I can tell them apart. And then I'm going to go over to my Tiki, this little text tool, and you can just click anywhere and you can start typing. And it's gonna obviously write our text on here. Once I'm happy with whatever I've written, you can either click the little green check mark or you can just go over to your select tool and that kind of sets the text. You can always go back and change what you've written though. You can either just click the text tool or the T key is the shortcut for that. And one of the really important things about Photoshop as you go is learning all the shortcuts because that really helps you to be able to do things a lot faster in it. So I have this right here. Just gonna kind of move it around a little. Again, those little purple guidelines are gonna help me center it. And so you can see that it's put this text under this first one, this can one. So then I'm also going to create another text area. And I wanna actually change this font. So I'm just gonna double click anywhere in here. And I'm going to go up to my fonts. And one of the things I actually show you in my class is how you can install some different fonts inside Photoshop. So you can, you know, really use any fonts that you own. And of course, right now, this is really, really big. So up here, we can resize our text. You can go in and either manually pick something or if you kind of click and drag right here where this text is, it lets you just resize it, which is kind of nice because then you can just resize it till it looks good. And you can also, again, just like an image, you can use these nodes and hold shift and resize as you want. And our text is looking a little wonky here. So one thing that's important to know is if you go up to window, we can go up to character. And there's a lot of crazy settings here, but one of the important ones is our line spacing. So usually your line spacing will be set on auto, but you can also make this smaller or bigger, which depending on your text, you know, and the image you're making, you want, might, might want that altered a little bit. Just gonna resize this a little and center things. And then one way that I make sure that everything, you know, is lined up right, because Having images that are centered and text that's centered, you know, that really helps your brand to look professional, is you can select these different layers. So I'm gonna hold down, um, I'm on a Mac, so I'd hold down the Command key, but if you're on a PC, you just hold down the Control key. And I have these two layers selected. And you can see, once I start selecting layers, these options open up here on Photoshop. And there's these ones that let you align things in different ways. So there's this one right here that's gonna help me just center things, which it looks like I'm pretty good right now. But if for some reason any of this was, you know, crazy and off center, 
I could select the two and hit the center key and it's gonna line them up for me. Then again, I can use those purple guidelines. Okay, so this is some of the basics of our template that we have going on here, right? So, and the cool thing is now I have kind of my text set but what I can do is I can make a new layer and let's say I have a quote that I wanna put in here. So I could turn off, you know, my Cantoni layer and I could use this and I could actually make a quote on here like that I would use for Instagram. Okay, so we, we have a lot of things in here already. Now, one of the things that I find a lot of people that are used to using Canva and PicMonkey, one of the things they miss the most in Photoshop is, you know, Canva and PicMonkey, they give you a lot of like fun little graphics that you can use. But a lot of people don't realize that Photoshop actually has a lot of their own. We go back over to our little objects menu and you're just gonna click and hold down. They have this custom shape tool. And if I open that up and, I, and then I go up here, you can see there's this little shape button. And you can see Photoshop has a lot of shapes here, not a ton, but there's quite a few. But the really cool thing is you can actually go on places like Creative Market. Um, there's even a lot of sites that give away these graphics for free. And you can bring in your own custom graphics. So you aren't limited you know, this really is way more open-ended than even Canva or PicMonkey because there's so much more that you can do with all of these. But it's kind of fun because you can, I don't have a ton here right now, but you can bring in little floral graphics if you want. Um, you can even do some overlays, you know, with rounded corners. There's some check boxes. Um, let's see, there's some arrows up here that you can use. And you're just gonna click on whichever one you wanna use. Like let's say we wanted to use this arrow by whatever quote we're doing. I'm gonna click on that, which selects it. And then you're just gonna click and drag on the screen. And again, you're gonna hold the shift key to kind of constrain the proportions. And right now it made this white, but what I can do is if I go up here to this menu, there's two things, there's the fill and the stroke. So the fill is like the inside part of the image. I'm just gonna make this pink for right now. And the stroke would be the outside edge. So, you know, if you wanted a different stroke, it's kind of dotted right now. But for right now, I'm, I'm not gonna worry about the stroke. So I'm gonna, have, I'm gonna select the no stroke. But you can put different graphics on your template, just like this. And if you have some branded graphics, you know, if you had a designer who helped you create your brand and, you know, there are some different graphics that you had, what you can do is I would usually create like a new group for these and I'd call it graphics. And you can just drag these in and keep these different graphics in there. So you could even do this with, you know, some PNG images you have, like, you know, we have some of our brilliant business moms florals. I could do stuff like that with. And yeah, you just bring those in and use those on your template. Okay, and let's say we have, you know, I know this isn't a great quote or anything like that, but let's say we've created something here, we've created something beautiful. Now there's two important things to do. First of all, what we wanna do is we want to make sure that we hit save on this because we've done all this beautiful work on a template, you know, that we've created for our business. We wanna make sure that we don't lose all the progress that we've made. So we're just gonna go up to file and save or you can hit command or control S. We're gonna make sure that we save all of our changes. And then once we're ready to actually save a photo that you know we wanna use on Instagram, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up to file and save as. And then, you know, let's just call this, we're just gonna call it ID photo. You'd obviously wanna give it a pretty specific name. And then there's a whole lot of options down here under the saving, but there's pretty much two main formats that you'd wanna use for Instagram. One is JPEG and one is PNG. It doesn't make a huge difference which one you use. JPEGs are great, especially if you're the, you know, the graphic that you have is mostly just a photo, you know, like one of the backgrounds, you're just pretty much using that. Using JPEG is great. 
if you're ever saving a graphic that has either um, some some transparent background or if there's text, usually saving as a PNG makes the text a little more crisp. So usually for Instagram, if I know there's gonna be text in the image, I pick PNG. So I've given it a name, said PNG. I kind of leave all these settings alone usually because Photoshop kind of has it set up right here. And then I can just hit save. Depending on what option you've picked, either JPEG or PNG, they'll give you some options here. But again, I usually go with Photoshop's defaults. That's usually the safest bet, unless you really know what you're doing here. And I'll hit OK. It's going to take it just a minute to save. So now the great thing is, again, with a template like this, you can just have it saved as is. I'm just going to close all these folders because we have our backgrounds here. We have our overlays. And I just made one tonight, but you know, you might have maybe later on you wanted to make a circular background or even one that's like a triangle just covering half of this. You know, you can save all of those different overlays here and swap between, excuse me, swap between them depending on the graphic that you're creating. Okay, I'm going to bring Beth Ann back on real quick if she's ready, just so uh, maybe she has some questions and some more, some more things that I can cover. Hey. Hey, Ellen, that was amazing. I, like, I picked up so many tips. I... Oh my goodness. I, I would not now. Okay. I've navigated Photoshop before, but it's been a while. I, there's no way I'm ever doing it again without you. <laughs> so, like, because I, I just love that when you were doing something, you're like, okay, watch out for this or what? Like, there's so many things where I feel like a lot of teachers want to just pretend like, oh, you just do this as this in the end. And whereas you're thinking about those of us beginners who are like, wait, this thing popped up, you know? <laughs> what do I do? But there's so many options. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I feel like you explained all the options so well. And so I'm like, okay, yes, I could do this. Yeah. Um, oh, okay. So someone was asking, we did have a few questions. Okay, awesome. um, someone said, do you have to have the newest PS for the class? Um, oh, no, I'm... You do need Photoshop, like the full version of Photoshop. Even some of the older versions will be fine, but a lot of what I teach won't really work for Photoshop elements itself. Like um, some of the groups and things and clipping masks won't, they're just, you can't do that in Photoshop elements. But as long as you have a version of like Adobe's actual Photoshop, anything I teach is applicable. Okay, great. And for those of you who don't know, you can get Photoshop and Lightroom for 10 bucks a month. So it's actually cheaper than the can Canva is like 13 bucks a month to be able to do even any like some sort of template, which it's not or even have custom fonts. Yeah. Yeah. So and then pick monkey. We still are. I think it's it's right around 10 bucks or it's somewhere it might be six bucks a month or something, but you can't you can't do all this um, at all. So anyway, so I mean, that's it. Cause I always assume that Photoshop was like so expensive, but. Right, right. And yeah. I think that $10 a month plan is a newer thing Adobe's has, which is, I think is amazing. Cause it makes it so much more accessible. Yeah, exactly. Someone, and someone actually asked how, what was that question? I'm, my thing won't let me scroll back through for some oh. reason, maybe because Carly's helping out on our page too, but. Um, they were asking how we like the the monthly subscription software. <laughs> uh, I, I personally really like it. I, it. I think it depends on the company, obviously, like a, a place like Adobe that, you know, I know when I'm paying monthly that they're going to keep it up to date. And, you know, anytime I've ever had a problem and had to put in, you know, a ticket, it's, it's been super easy. So I, yeah, I think it depends on the company, obviously for what, you know, if you're paying monthly, you want to make sure it's a legit company. But Adobe's been around forever as a professional program. So I feel pretty, pretty comfortable paying for it. Yeah, exactly. And and two, like you said, paying month to month means we're always getting the latest version. And I also kind of like the fact that like, OK, so it's it would it's 10 bucks a month. Now, granted, we pay for more because we've got 
uh, gosh, I'm totally blanking on all like the, the InDesign. And, of, right, right. Yes, yeah. But um, but I love that we didn't have to plunk down like 300 bucks all at once when we weren't sure if we'd use the software for a long time, right? So it's nice to just, yeah, you just get your foot in the door with 10 bucks, which is great. Now, and someone else was asking about graphics. There was a little confusion there. Um, they were like, wait, you can't, use graphics from creative market and we're like no 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 you totally can yeah, you can yes yes yeah so um that's something to you guys i don't know if anyone else has experienced this i totally did um all the time uh when i was doing my own business graphics which is i would go hunt for like product mock-up shots or like all these cool things and then they would actually be Photoshop files because there's so many things that are just designed to work in Photoshop and they don't work anywhere else. And so I would see all of these amazing things and be like, oh, great, I can't use them with PicMonkey. So that's what's really cool about Photoshop is pretty much if you're if you find cool graphics, if you find something amazing, it's yeah, chances mm -hmm. are you feel that. Yeah, use it in, in Photoshop and make it even better. Oh, and also I wanted to clarify something else. Okay. Yeah. So with templates, what you're telling me, Ellen, is you could literally go and grab like a hundred gorgeous images and just click your little eyeball through. So like if you wanted a bunch of different things that had a quote and you just click your eyeball through and boom, 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 boom. And, you and then could just save, like I've saved like 30 files in a row. Like you, I mean, you could have a month of Instagram photos done and like, like once you have this all set up, it's pretty fast. I actually meant yeah. to show like one of our BBM, like our Pinterest template is like that right now. I have like over a hundred layers just of all the backgrounds <laughs> and like, and it's so easy to make it like, it takes me a couple minutes to make a pin because I have all of that all set up and ready. Yeah. Which this is the other thing, you guys, like all the time I'm coming to Ellen being like, can you create this beautiful thing for me? Can you do this for me? And I am constantly amazed at how fast Ellen shoots back and is like, yep, done. And just sends me this beautiful, amazing thing. And I'm like, how did you even do it that fast? So like, that's the power of Photoshop, which you're not going to get with other tools. And yes, is there a learning curve? Sure. But like, what, like, you let Ellen hold your hand and you get that template set up once you do, man, it's just, it pays you back in terms of the time you get back. Ah, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. And in the course, I do actually have a lot of the templates already made for you. And I have a video showing you how to customize them for your branding. So like half the work's done for you already. Ah, amazing. Oh yeah. Yeah. I totally forgot. Yeah. Ellen's got bonus templates for you guys. So Yes. Yeah, I've got like Sweet. 12 so far, but I'm adding more because I'm I'm a template junkie. So <laughs> <laughs> love it. Love it. Uh, well, do you guys have any other questions for Ellen before we let her go? I personally just I thought that was awesome. Thank you so much for taking the time to yeah, teach us, you. Ellen. Super that fun. was so fun. Um, and yeah. And so if you guys loved that. Uh, you're going to absolutely love PS Crash Course, which is Ellen's course all about how to use Photoshop to create gorgeous graphics for your business. So um, if you there's a link below the video where you can check out the landing page and uh, there are just tons of visuals on that page. So you can see exactly what Ellen's going to show you how to do inside the course. So, you know, basically, if you've ever been frustrated at how much time it's taking you to create gorgeous images for your business, if you've been frustrated that you see other beautiful businesses and you're like, why can't I do that for my business? Um, if you are frustrated because you don't have the budget to have a photo shoot every month for your business, I don't have the budget for a photo shoot every month. So I turn to Ellen and she takes my gorgeous photos that I maybe took a year ago or even two years ago and she'll like insert new products and just do amazing things. So anyways, if, if any of those things fit you, definitely go check out PS Crash Course and, ooh, and sign up because this week, Ellen's got a special offer for us. So usually her course is $75 and she's offering it to everyone here at Brilliant Business Moms for 37 bucks, 
which, <laughs> holy cow, I and Ellen and I had this email earlier this week before Ellen opened the doors and I was like, are you sure? Are you sure you want to give this away for 37 bucks? Because like, that's just a really good deal. And she was like, and of course, Ellen, she's the nicest person ever. She's like, yes, that sounds great. <laughs> so I, yeah, seriously, you guys, just make sure you snatch it up because uh, I think it's pretty obvious from Ellen's training tonight that she's a ninja and she knows so much. And again, she's thinking about all of the beginners and making sure that you're not freaked out by certain things that you see or don't know what screen to get to next. Like she walks you through it step by step. Mm -hmm. And even like, I know tonight it's a little overwhelming just hopping into Photoshop, but like one of the first lessons I go through is I literally go through like not all the tools, but all the tools you need and like walk you through them all. So it's not overwhelming. Yeah. And that's the other thing I love is like, you're going to give everyone what they need, but none of what they don't need, which is what I find like from YouTube videos, which is just like, okay, let me sit through this hour long video to get the two minutes that I, you know, needed of that little trick. So Ellen, yeah, so she's, she's cutting all that stuff out, just all the stuff that you actually need. All right. So yeah, thank you guys so much for hanging out with us tonight. And thank you so much, Ellen, yeah, for taking the time. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Have for a good sure. night, guys. All right. Bye, guys. We'll see you soon.